Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Welcome back to theCUBE, Lisa Martin with John Furrier on our first day of two days of coverage of Cisco DevNet Create 2019 at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. John and I are pleased to welcome Tony Cuevas, the Director of Solutions Architecture and DevOps from Liberty Technology. Tony, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for having us. <laughs> so tell our audience a little bit about Liberty Technology before we get into sure. the community, what you're doing, your breakout session. Not a problem. Liberty Technology is a company where at MSP, company down in Griffin, Georgia, and so we handle a lot of, uh, we have a lot of our clients are either public sector, cities, all different types of, all, all different, different verticals. So we'll hand, um, so if you have a client or a customer out there that needs, um, needs an extra arm into their IT, um, we're there for them. So you're based so out of Georgia, which means that how warm it is in here today outside should be nothing <laughs> for you, right? Oh, tell me about it, right? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> outside, right now, since there's no humidity, I like it. Back home, it's humidity. Steve, Californians, we're babies. Yeah. <laughs> so Tony, public sector, we've done a lot sure. of interviews with public sector folks, whether it's towns and cities or towns, schools. municipalities, cities. They're a lot. IT light, and then they don't have the DevOps expertise, and, and, but cloud's a perfect fit for them, but they have a lot of certain characteristics, whether it's email, it's very ephemeral, people come and go. So getting people collaborating in these distinct user groups that have different roles and responsibilities is a challenge. How are you guys solving that? Because this is something I know you guys have worked on. Right. And this is a challenge that's not only for public sector, it's for enterprises too. Right. How do you bring people that are distinct user populations that have a, an application or a role or use case into a collaborative, horizontally scalable system? We show them, to be honest. <laughs> we go in there and we go in there and we discover as to what they're doing now. What are their pain points? what do they want to change, where do they want to go, and then we show them the collaboration side of it, we show them like WebEx Teams, we show them all of the uh, meetings, the room devices, things like that, and then not just on the collaboration side of it, but also if they're uh, helping with O365, their security, the Meraki, things like that. That's how we bring. That's how we bring collaboration into this in, into the public sectors. Talk about the Cisco dynamic. We've been covering sure. DevNet Create since it started. Yep. Uh, DevNet now is Cisco Live. A couple of years. You're seeing kind of a new vibe and new mojo going on with the, within the Cisco ecosystem of actually coding stuff up, so whether it's slinging APIs together or creating new ones, new capabilities. How has it changed the um, the uh, delivery and performance of the for the customers? Because this is not just your old school Cisco networking company. Yeah, they got apps, things are connected, data's moving from point A to point B. Right. But these kind of integration challenges, this kind of seamless programmability is the core theme here. What's your reaction and thoughts on all this? Um, well, first of all, this is my first DevNet Create. I've been to other Cisco Lives, I've not been to DevNet Create yet, so, so far I'm enjoying this a lot. It's, I like the, the tight niche, the community style of this, of this event. Um, I'm sorry, go back to you. <laughs> some, I'm trying to go over the little creations bit. that are going on here, right. very community oriented. Kind of reminds me of an open source project. Oh, yeah. Way. And people are talking to each other, like a lot of hallway conversations. But it's a kind of a new kind of collaborative model that customers are now getting exposed to. Right. This is something new. I mean, it is, yeah, it's new. And I'm finding a lot of times where um, a lot of customers and clients, they've heard about it, but they don't know it yet. So it's our job to actually get them to adopt to it, and, it, and also adapt to it as well. Yeah. So, so, for people, so it, it's almost like how we have our own like community here for DevNet, it's almost how can we take that structure and show it to our clients and customers. Yeah. A little translation involved, kind of kind of tamper down the excitement maybe, or keep it up. The question I have for you is, for people watching that aren't here at DevNet, what's, it, what's the vibe here like? What's some of the coolest things you've seen and heard? So um, far. Some of the, well, the keynote was great. I thought it was amazing, the, the keynote, uh, how they actually showed how, especially with the Meraki, how, when, when Mandy Wiley was out there talking about from the a small campus to the festival and then to an actual stadium. That was like, a great stadium. use case. That was a great use case. Yes, Very I, relatable. I thought it was incredible, especially with like the big stadium and how John, John McDonough came out and showed about how there was a fight on the field, but yet no one actually saw it. But yet then when they went through the actual like demo and showed the actual video, we were like, oh yeah, that, that, that's just amazing how you can, it's almost like almost like the minority, 
report. Where you're like, okay, you're already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Data. Yeah, yeah. It's the data's it's out there. All that data, and they're just machine learning and AI, just watching people, seeing what they're doing, and kind of almost like predicting what they're going to do. It's kind of scary and, and a little bit, actually. A little bit, I agree with you. I thought they did a great job with that, especially coming off the heels of Coachella, and showing yeah. how they can enable, Cisco can enable um, developers, infrastructure folks, to set up secure networks of, of different sizes, and also be able to use, in real time, machine learning, AI, right. to evaluate what's going on at these events, and that was a very cool real world example of yeah. What they showed, leveraging machine learning, identifying there's an, uh, there's an issue here, there's an altercation. Be surprised at a sports event, right? And deploying those. It those happens a lot. Security. Many sports events, though. Although I thought it was odd that the security <laughs> was just casually walking up to the fight. That's another thing. Well, it could have been that the video was slowed down a bit. You don't know. It could be. Fast. You're right. Yeah, there's been. so many more etiquette rules now at events, whether it's you know hate crimes or just you know just yeah. violent language. Fights, obviously, everyone sees those at right. at events, but you know this actual now surveillance tech out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you can tell the guy's had it, how many beers he's had, I mean, <laughs> as soon as <laughs> exactly. IOT kicks in, soon you know. It's probably going to have something where they can actually uh, regularly check out someone's like heat signature and they can tell how much yeah. they've had. He's about to explode because the Red Sox are going to blow the lead again. <laughs> you know, the Red Sox, oh. <laughs> well, they're not having a good year, but last year they won it last year. I'm a Yankee fan, so. Yeah, the Yankee fans. The heat map would be off the charts. Now, Philly fans, it's a whole other story. Uh, I don't, okay, I digress. So um, you've got a breakout session, sorry, John. You've no, got a, a no breakout, a lightning session, that's tomorrow? Lightning talk tomorrow. Tell us the title and what you're going to be talking about. Okay, sure, My, the title is Orchestrate the 45%. So Orchestrate the 45 percent. Correct. All right. There's dig into that. <laughs> I'll dig into that a little bit. Uh, I actually have a slide where we. Uh, it was actually Susie. We actually did a presentation a while back where she put up a slide where it says where she talked about how 55 percent of partners are creating apps and developing their own apps. So we at Liberty we saw that and we were like, okay, what about the other 45 percent? So that's where that the idea came out to. Okay, let's. Let, I'll do a talk about how do we orchestrate the 45%. So in Tails, what I'm doing with that is that we actually have a platform called Contuit where there, where that uh, platform has the ability to integrate with multiple business processes. So we're connecting it, we're uh, integrating with ConnectWise, with Meraki, um, doing Adabot, and, and so that I have it where that there'll be a trigger or a webhook from one of my Meraki cameras mm -hmm. for like a motion which will trigger, which will create a ticket and connect wise, so this can help out some uh, a help desk or service desk, and then that which will also then get thrown into Teams, and you can click on the ticket, and then also run commands and grab a snapshot from the camera and sends it right into Teams, Forex Teams. Talk about the Meraki for a minute, because we sure. get a lot of, we're hearing a lot of buzz about Meraki. It's not just wireless, it's not just uh, what you might think it is. It seems to be connective tissue. You meant there's a great demo that uh, added a tissue showing around you know, AR with looking at network configuration. Meraki seems to be connecting all this together. Yeah. What's your view on this? What's the, what's I, the, what's the take? I, I, for one, I love Meraki. I run Meraki at home. <laughs> so I have the uh, wall, the, <laughs> the wireless, the switching, the cameras, and just that it's, it's one, Really, they have like their own their own platform that connects, that has all their devices connecting into that dashboard, and you can do so much with it. That they're actually they're open up now the APIs, the web hooks. This it's so much things that you can actually integrate with it. It's just great, and just the analytics that you get from it. It's amazing. And this is what you were talking about earlier about bringing these teams together through yep. web hooks or APIs in through Meraki, the connected tissue. Correct. And then allow the apps to be valuable across different groups. Correct. Very valuable. So cool. then, so that then you don't have it. An engineer doesn't have to have to touch different applications or devices. They can get it all from one, and from that one application, click and go to where they need to go to. Got it. So we're only on and halfway through sure. day one of your first StepNet create, yes. but it sounds like you've already been exposed to so many things <laughs> that I can see the wheel is turning. <laughs> what are you guys sort of anticipating that you're going to be able to bring back to to Liberty? And, and all, that will really help drive what you guys are doing, drive it forward, drive that customer engagement more um, deeply, and, and educate? Well, since it is, you know, it's like half day already, on day one, um, there's still so much to see here. There's so much to see about IoT, there's a bunch of workshops here about for Meraki and the APIs, to which I want to join in and see what I can take out of that and bring it back. 
Um, what else? I know there's a bunch of stuff here <laughs> that's going on. So I, I, I want to gather all that and just be a sponge and then bring it back to Liberty and say, hey, this is what we can do. How can it fit into our business model? Awesome, well Tony, thank you so much for stopping by and talking with John and me on the program this afternoon. Thanks we for appreciate me. <laughs> it. Best of luck in your lightning session tomorrow as well. Thank you very much, enjoy. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching us on theCUBE live from Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching.